foundation he can stand on. Join today. Learn more at scouting.org slash lions. My son is at that age where his imagination is really growing, and he's becoming more curious about the world around him. He's creative, exploring, and building things. He's a lion. Cub Scouting's pilot program for kindergarten-age boys gives my son the opportunity for adventure while helping him build a foundation he can stand on. Join today. Learn more at scouting.org slash lion. All right. Um, apologize if there's some lag on that video. Uh, that video is available uh, on the website. Uh, I'm going to then move to a, another uh, introduction uh, from National, and it's a couple minutes um, piece on orientation. Hey guys, it's an exciting time to be joining the Scouting family. I officially welcome you to the new Lion Pilot Program. So we're looking into your very near future. I see little boys laughing and having fun, and oh, there you are, laughing and having a great time too. The Lion Program is for kindergarten age boys and their adult partners to experience values-based, relevant content, games, hands-on exploration, and focused, exciting family time. Okay, let's bring in an expert. Hey, Erica, thanks for joining us. Hi, Brian. Now, you're a Lion guy, so can you fill us in on the, on the program? Sure. I am a Lion guy. We mentor adult partners. Every boy brings an adult partner who takes turns leading an activity and meeting. But they're not alone. As a lion guy, I'm always available to help and give advice. May I borrow your magic pad? Yeah, sure. This is the Parent and Leader Guidebook, which has everything you need to make your meeting a success. Seriously, everything. The details for all the meetings and adventures are in the guidebook. For example, in the adventure King of the Jungle, the Lion Scout learns the parts of a flag ceremony and has a fun activity to make, a flag mosaic. All the information is there. And not just the activity. There are details for every single step of the meeting. The preparation, the gathering, the opening, talk time, activity, closing, and even after the meeting. The Lions also have an adventure book to reinforce each meeting topic and stickers for adventure. And look at the lion shirt and cap. So cool. Well, that's a quick look. You can get more information at scouting.org slash lion. You can also find other training there, including youth protection, which of course is required for all lion guides. Let's see how my son Brian likes being a lion scout. So how do you like being a lion? It's awesome. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. That's awesome. Be sure to share this with your fellow adult leaders in your new lion den. And remember, everything you need is in your lion parent and leader guidebook. All right, so uh, those were a couple of the resources that are available, again, on that uh, um, on that uh, website, uh, scouting.org slash lion. Uh, if you go down uh, to the website, you're going to see all kinds of uh, resources. Uh, you're going to see uh, some uh, information on the right-hand side. There's lion resources uh, for uh, uh, program overview, some frequently asked questions, which we'll get to later. Um, there's uh, the, the video was the video we just watched here. Um, there's a PowerPoint presentation, which we'll, we'll go through, through here in just a moment. Uh, that uh, uh, promotional uh, video was the 30-second spot that we watched uh, uh, as we started. So uh, again, those resources, uh, scouting.org slash lion. It'll also redirect you to scoutingwire.org. It's on the Scouting Wire uh, under the lion section. So for those of you that uh, uh, have been to the Scouting Wire. Um, if uh, there's the FAQ. All right, so let's uh, let's kind of go through our, our PowerPoint uh, presentation here as we um, as we learn about uh, our Lion program. So our Lion program again is the uh, the pilot uh, program uh, for uh, kindergarten age boys. Uh, I certainly uh, want to say thank you for your uh, your role in uh, in helping to uh, facilitate the Lion program. If you're here uh, uh, representing a district or representing a unit, uh, we certainly uh, appreciate your uh, uh, your commitment uh, to the, uh, um, the the program. 
Uh, the role of the Lion Cup Guide is a very important role. Um, the, lion, the, the idea with uh, um, the Lion Cup program being a pilot is that we want uh, folks to uh, understand that uh, they need to uh, come to training and really give some, uh, some attention to uh, um, helping to uh, carry the program forward. So uh, it's uh, important uh, uh, to help uh, those uh, kindergarten boys and, and uh, families enjoy their, uh, their first experience in scouting. Um, the Lion Guides are really here to help us uh, create memories that, that will last a lifetime uh, to build the stronger families uh, and uh, help those families discover the fun of scouting. Um, that Lion uh, Pilot Program was created by the Boy Scouts of America to really to address the needs of kindergarten age boys. Uh, this is a program that was, that's been uh, in kind of initial pilot stage for, for a couple of years. This is actually the first year it's gone uh, widespread uh, to allow anybody in the Boy Scouts of a of America, excuse me, to um, participate. Uh, it is still considered a pilot because there are some things that uh, uh, that are going to be required for those folks that are that are participating in the program. The first of which is uh, to be oriented uh, on this uh, webinar today. So, uh, the Lion program is uh, designed to be uh, for uh, the technical requirements are must be five years old by September 30th, 2016, and not yet seven years old to partic to participate. I know we've had some questions of. Um, uh, boys that turn five, like first part of October, or if there's uh, you know some exceptions within a school district. But really, the intent of this program is this is for a five-year-old kindergartner, or you know, for the year prior to them being eligible to be in Tiger Cubs. Um, so it's not for four-year-olds or three-year-olds, uh, but it's for uh, those five-year-old kindergarten age boys. Um, so if there are some technical questions on on on, uh, on ages, um, you please. Uh, uh, contact us here at uh, the Center for Scouting. Uh, we can uh, you know, take those uh, case by case. Uh, you know, if, if a boy is, you know, in with his peers, he's in a five-year-old kindergarten program, but doesn't turn five until you know, later in the fall. Um, you know, the idea is that we want him to be with his, his social connection of, uh, uh, of friends. Uh, this is the year prior to uh, to Tiger Cubs, so it's really designed to be an introduction to Cub Scouting, um, and in the pilot, we're asking that uh, people uh, implement the, the curriculum as written. Uh, to ensure validity. So uh, this in this initial year, we're at, we want you to follow the program as written, uh, and then there's going to be some opportunity for, for feedback and, and uh, um, really to order, in order to engage to gauge the effectiveness of the program, it's important that everybody follows the program as written. All right, so uh, the Lion program uh, offers kindergarten age boys and their adult partner an experience that includes fun while achieving scouting desired outcomes uh, active and fast in an active and fast-paced environment with, with hands-on exploration, uh, values-based relevant content, and uh, provides focus uh, time for, uh, for families to, to spend time together. Um, <clears throat> certainly, uh, as we all know, uh, scouting uh, is designed to you know, provide uh, uh, Character building, uh, citizenship, uh, uh, fitness, uh, leadership, uh, skill development, uh, and uh, outdoor activities uh, for families. Uh, but uh, certainly, we we know that uh, the kids want to, to have fun. Um, so Lions uh, will uh, kind of tie all that together um, and uh, provide a, a solid experience. So as we get started, um, we're going to be recruiting Lion youth uh, leaders for the fall of 2016. So we would like you all to do between now or if you if you were uh, here as a lion uh, guide, um, that's great. But we also want to make sure we um, uh, select uh, that the person that's going to be um, serving as the lion guide for uh, each pack. So we want those lion guides uh, to really be identified prior to recruitment night. In this pilot program, what we don't want to happen is we don't want you to uh, uh, start recruiting kids in the fall. Uh, and then have a bunch of families at a table and say, well, here's the, the new Lion program, figure it out. Uh, if you're going to be participating in the Lion pilot, you need to have somebody uh, per, uh, that's going to serve as the Lion guide, that's going to welcome people at the fall recruitment or the back to school nights uh, at school, uh, that can be there to, to really help shepherd the, uh, uh, the new families through this, uh, this Lion program. Uh, so the, those adult, uh, uh, those lion guides uh, will be uh, uh, will be registered as lion guides. Uh, adult partners, um, when they uh, they sign up, would complete the youth application uh, and uh, submit app uh, application fees. Uh, on the youth application, uh, we will be registering boys as uh, kindergartners. Uh, 
So that uh, that will be this fall. Uh, there'll be an op option for PACs to register uh, youth as kindergartners. So when it says grade, please put K for kindergarten. Uh, you can write lion on there if, if you like, but certainly uh, we want them to to uh, indicate uh, if, there, if there's a K on the uh, application, they will be registered uh, as, uh, as a lion. Um, <clears throat> the lion guides would need to complete the, uh, the adult application. Uh, the lion guides are uh, uh, registered uh, fee-paying um, members. And uh, lion guides are required to complete youth protection training. So um, like any other... Uh, uh, Position and scouting, those lion guides need to uh, complete the youth protection training and complete an application. A uh, big uh, disclaimer on the bottom, although youth protection training is required for the lion guides, it's also suggested and recommended that all adult partners complete the training. It will be a great opportunity for, uh, for those uh, uh, families uh, right from the start to, uh, to, to experience, the, you know, to understand uh, the, the youth protection training uh, if they're going to be a part of meetings. But, uh, but the requirement is that the lion guide, much like a tiger den leader or a wolf den leader, um, the lion guide is uh, the uh, person that needs to have youth protection training. All right, so what do we need to get started? Uh, <clears throat> you'll need uh, the program material kit. Uh, uh, the program material kit uh, contains the Adventures book uh, and the uh, Leader Guidebook. Uh, the Youth Lion Adventure book is designed as, as a kind of a memory and keepsake book. It is a it's paper bound um, a book, but uh, but it is a, a kind of workbook that the boys can can hold on to. Uh, the uniform for lions is a, a blue uh, lion shirt with a kind of iron-on detail. It is uh, ironed on uh, the questions for those of you that may have been around when the Tiger Cup program launched. We were just uh, selling the iron-on decal, but uh, this is a, a shirt with, with the decal already ironed on. Um, and then there's a lion cub hat. So we're asking for the pilot program that because this is a pilot, uh, that the, the uniform be the, uh, the lion cub uh, t-shirt and hat. Uh, please do not uh, um, tell the lion cubs to go out and uh, buy a, a field uniform that would come uh, in their, their first grade year. So this is the official <laughs> uniform and hat for the, uh, the lion cubs. Uh, the adults are encouraged to wear a, a Cub Scout activity shirt, or there's also a lion cub polo shirt. It's the same uh, navy blue uh, color with a collar. Um, there actually has been some, uh, some requests nationwide for adult sizes in the t-shirts. The supply division has said that they're working on uh, trying to make those T-shirts available. Uh, however, when the Lion program pilot was uh, was written, um, the design was for an adult to wear a polo shirt. But uh, we're, we've been told that uh, there will be uh, adult-sized T-shirts uh, forthcoming as well. So, and um, the the scout shops in Appleton and Green Bay will have these uh, materials available. They do have a, a very limited supply now, but um, as we get through the summer, they're going to be getting more uh, more books, and uh, they will be getting uh, T-shirts and, and hats. So the adventure book and, and, and uniform, uh, the youth adventure book is designed, as again, as a memory keepsake. Uh, the uniform uh, uh, T-shirt uh, and optional cap. Um, I have a very similar slide, it, but this does uh, talk about the cost. So those program material kits are $9.99 retail. So that comes with that. So each person that buys a kit, they get the, the uh, parent uh, guidebook, uh, parent leader guidebook, as well as the, the youth uh, adventure book. And the reason for that is this is really designed to be a shared leadership program. So we're really designing the program with the, uh, the, the lion guide is going to be um, organized, helping to organize the, the den, uh, but then we're trying to share resources. So, um, so we want to rotate uh, each family um, can go around and, and take a... Uh, a meeting to lead. Um, so there's a, a parent and leader guidebook uh, in, in every kit. So those are retailing for $9.99. Uh, the t-shirt is $9.99 and that uh, cap is $12.99 uh, <coughs> retail as well. So the basic structure of this Lion program will be dens of six to eight boys plus, an ad plus, plus their adult partners. Um, the Lion uh, program or the Lion pilot was designed uh, to, uh, to offer uh, opportunities for two den meetings per month. Uh, usually about uh, 45 minutes, uh, an outing for the entire family. And then the, the pilot was designed for PACs to then invite uh, the kindergarten boys to participate in two to three PAC meetings. 
Um, so we want you to find fun, uh, exciting PAC meetings to uh, invite the boys to, maybe invite them to your blue and gold, uh, maybe invite them to help uh, with uh, scouting for food. Um, but um, um, in the, uh, the pilot stage, uh, we're saying, you know, don't necessarily have to, have to um, mandate that these folks come to every uh, PAC meeting. Um, so we wanted to give them kind of the introduction and understand that these are um, younger boys. These are boys who are a year younger than, uh, than the Tiger Cubs, and we all know that uh, you know, attendance, attention spans of Tiger Cubs can be uh, you know, vastly different than those uh, the second year Weeblos. So uh, keep that in mind uh, as we uh, kind of uh, integrate the kindergartners into this program. Um, lion guides are, are there to, to set the example to help get things started on the right foot. Uh, we want uh, them to help families agree on a meeting location and time, uh, plan and prepare for that initial den meeting. Uh, we want them to model and, and show the families a well-run den meeting. So, you know, certainly for the you know, September, October time frame, <clears throat> you know, help, uh, please help as a lion guide help to um, get people uh, started on the right foot to model a couple of those, uh, those, those great uh, den meetings. Uh, we want to have uh, each adult partner sign up for a turn leading a den meeting, uh, and also um, you know to help. Uh, I mean, if we know that uh, you know there's a family that's probably um, you know, not comfortable, not interested, you know, work with them, uh, you know, find a, a, a proper role for them to help uh, with the den. Um, if you can identify you know a couple of families that are they're really gung ho and wanting to, to help lead. Um, you as the that lion uh, guide can help uh, identify if, if somebody was going to take leadership in, in some additional activities. Uh, but again, that the, the idea of the pilot is to try to rotate around and, and share leadership to get people uh, to get all the families um, you know comfortable with the fact that we're going to ask them to, to help us uh, uh, run the program as we move move further into Cub Scouting and Boy Scouting. All right. So it's again with shared leadership. Um, so we'd, we'd really like the Lion Guide to be, um, you know, an experienced den leader or somebody um, that has some experience that can do uh, the research beforehand and, and can be uh, prepared prepared to fill these um, obligations. Those obligations of uh, overseeing the den, uh, communicating with participating families, again, leading that in, those initial den meetings and outings, uh, mentor adult partners as they um, <clears throat> through the den meetings and outings uh, during that initial year. And then really to help integrate the, the lion den into PAC and uh, PAC leadership uh, activities. Um, the adult partners, uh, we want the adult partners to participate with the lions in all meetings and outings. Again, uh, keep in mind these are kindergartners and uh, we don't want this to be uh, uh, started as a, as a um, experience where um, you're going to, you know, try to have one or two people uh, or two people, you know, lead an entire den. Uh, we want a parent, uh, the parents to be part of this uh, process. Uh, we want them to take turns leading a den meeting um, and, uh, you know, again, model, um, you know, um, model the proper uh, uh, behavior. All right, so everything uh, you need to lead a den meeting or outing is in that Lion Parent and, and Leader uh, Guidebook. In that uh, Parent and Leader Guidebook, it's going to you know, kind of go through all the, the components of a proper meeting with, from the preparation to gathering, uh, opening, talk time, there's activities and, and closing. Uh, and then there's uh, some uh, items to do after that are all listed uh, meeting by meeting. It's really made easy. It's all here in that book. Um, for really anybody to, to follow. And this is kind of how it's laid out if you were to open the book. Uh, so you know, for gizmos and ga gadgets, gadgets, there's a gathering uh, activity, which was a milk jug toss. And then the um, activity would be um, rolling investigation, where you're going to collect uh, different size balls and cylinders and pipes. Um, you're going to investigate their movement. You're going to ask lions questions, such as you know which ones roll faster. Um, when they push across the floor, do they uh, roll at the same rate? Um, there's going to be a talk about an outing. Uh, so that outing might be, um, you know, you're going to be established, you know, I was going to say to establish uh, transportation and travel. It's going to give you three different options for an outing, like visiting a museum, visiting a hardware store to see how uh, see what makes up gadgets and gizmos, 
uh, or visit a community member who has an interest in his historical artifacts. Um, they can show Lyons antique gadgets and, and gizmo. So that could be a you know a field trip or maybe bring somebody into a you know a, a set location. But there's give, it gives you some different options for uh, for outings. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so the Lion program is, is designed with uh, five required adventures. The Lion's Honor, uh, which uh, we're recommending being the first meeting. So uh, the Lion's Honor, Fun on the Run, Animal Kingdom, Mountain Lion, and King of the Jungle. There's also uh, seven elective adventures. Um, so the, the program is, you know, again, designed to, to be run um, you know, with those five required, the seven electives, um, you know, 12 different uh, den meetings, um, so anywhere between five and 12, uh, and then, uh, um, you know, integrating into uh, some of the, the pack activities. Yeah, and the, um, so like Brian said, the, the first meeting really should be that lion's honor, but depending on, uh, you know, the weather or what you have going on, you can certainly mix up the order of those, uh, those meetings, and you can do the elective adventures at any time uh, in between or, or before the required adventures. And, um, you know, big, a lot of it is uh, things that can be done inside, kind of workbooks and, and drawings and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, there are some outdoor activities that might require you to go when the weather's warm or, or things like that. So just um, um, do the, the program as written, but you can switch the order of it uh, if you so desire. Um, and that lion's honor, it, it, yeah, that first when they're recommending being the first meeting, you're talking about a lot of basic scout things like scout sign, scout motto, scout salute, um, and, and um, yeah, so it's some of the basics. It is not the bobcat um, because the bobcat, the, the, this pro, this lion program is designed to stand alone to introduce boys to uh, to scouting. Uh, they would then earn their bobcat after completing the lion. So the bobcat then would become um, after uh, after this year, so that lion's honor will give them some of the um, some of the elements of the bobcat, but it's not the entire bobcat uh, badge. Um, so again, <clears throat> we're asking you to just remember your audience. Remember that uh, these are kindergartners; these are five-year-olds uh, or five five cares. Uh, they bring many great attributes to to the den. They're eager to learn with high energy, but to have very short attention spans. Um, it's a time of wonder and curiosity uh, in, in their lives. Um, in, in den meetings and outings, just remember that kindergartners haven't yet mastered sitting for long periods of time. Uh, to, you know, to help uh, them focus for success, uh, have active uh, activities. Um, you know, have active activities ready at a moment's notice. Uh, you know, like, you know, things like having them do jumping jacks or stretches with their arms, uh, reach up to the ceiling. Um, they're, again, they're just, their attention spans are, are, are very short. Uh, if they're having a hard time listening or engaging, you know, stop the activity, stop what they're doing, um, try to get them back on track. But uh, try to break it up with, uh, <clears throat> you know, some fun elements. Um, you know, be creative, ask questions. But really, just it's, it's about having fun. Um, you know, kids at you know, that age, they're they're there to have fun. Uh, they're probably not going to respond well to lecture. Um, but they want to, you know, short bursts of, of activities and uh, uh, get them to uh, really try try to create. Um, a love for the, uh, uh, the the scouting program and uh, kind of plant that seed with them as, as we move forward. So the recognition program for lions, um, they're recognized each time they complete an adventure with a sticker. So this this adventure book really is kind of a, a sticker book. Uh, they get their stickers uh, that come with it, and then they will put the sticker on the uh, the achievement uh, as, as they uh, uh, complete it. Uh, so that it it is immediate recognition, uh, but it's a sticker recognition. Upon completing those five required adventures, they would receive the lion badge. Uh, and that lion badge um, is shown here. It is uh, um, designed to be, uh, it looks like a rank advancement. Uh, the, the, the idea is that this becomes a, a fully integrated uh, program of the Boy Scouts. Uh, that's probably what the badge will look like. Uh, but right now that we are in pilot stage, so it is not an official uh, advancement uh, rank, so it is not worn on the field uniform. So the field uniform currently uh, will have the um, you wear the bobcat and tiger, uh, wolf, bear, uh, weevils. 
arrow light, but uh, the, the lion badge is a temporary patch right now. Uh, it can be worn on that. They could sew it on their T-shirt or put it on their hat or um, also sort of could be a temporary patch on the uh, um, um, new uniform, but is not. it is not designed to be worn on the field uniform yet as a, as a rank since this is uh, still a pilot program. <clears throat> but that is what the, uh, um, the lion badge will look like. Yeah, and the um, so it is not um, technically a rank advancement, so you don't have to submit a advancement form. Um, you can just come in and, and pick those up. Correct. Yeah. So here's uh, the stickers uh, from uh, the, uh, Lions Honor to Ready Set Grow. There's the uh, um, well, there's 12 of the stickers there, anyways. So these are an insert inside the book. This is what the stickers look like. Um, so pack participation, as we talked about, uh, uh, dens, you know, obviously dens are uh, from other, other grades are holding their own den meetings. Uh, once each month, dens uh, in a pack get together for a pack meeting led by the Cubmaster. Um, lions are going to be part of the pack, uh, really at an introductory level. Um, so this is, uh, again, I think for those of you that were around when the Tiger Cub program was, that was introduced, Tigers were completely separate before they uh, became integrated in, into the program. But the lion, with the lion pilot, we do want uh, you to integrate lions into the pack. Um, but we just get wanted to find those two or three pack meetings when selecting um, when it would be appropriate. But you know, just keep in mind, uh, you know, pick some really special uh, pack meetings, uh, make them feel included. Um, you know, consider things like the holiday pack meeting, the blue and gold, the end of year celebration. Uh, it was uh, uh, brought up, uh, somebody mentioned, well, how about the Pinewood Derby? Uh, in the pilot program, we're recommending, if you want to invite people to the Pinewood Derby, invite them as, as uh, just people to, to view the Pinewood Derby, maybe come for to watch a couple races. Uh, but uh, the boys at that age are, are not um, to the level yet where they're able to uh, effectively build a car. Uh, so, um, you know, we just want to... Uh, um, to keep that in mind, that the Pinewood Derby uh, would be better for them to be a, um, you know, to come for the day, to, to see the race, to maybe to build some excitement for the future, but uh, um, keep, keep that in mind. So training, uh, youth protection training, again, is going to be required for the Lion Guides. Uh, it's available free online at the scouting.org slash training slash youth protection. It's also linked through the Bay Lakes Council website. Uh, again, as uh, youth protection training is required for lion guides, it's also been suggested that all adult partners complete the training. It's not required that the adult partners take the training, but we do recommend that you uh, um, uh, share that with uh, all of the uh, adults as they uh, um, sign up with, with their boys. Um, <clears throat> so again, uh, there's that the lion guide and parent orientation video that we watched uh, uh, to start the uh, presentation here. Um, that's a great video uh, to, for you to share and have uh, the Lion Guides and Adult Partners uh, view. Uh, there's the slide presentations. There's actually a, a, a little different uh, um, PowerPoint presentation that's available on the website. Uh, very similar to what, to what we're going through today, but there are it's a little, little shorter um, that we'll, uh, we'll continue to make available uh, on, on our site. Uh, there's many resources at the, the scouting.org slash Lion site. Um, it's really kind of a, designed to be kind of a one-stop shop for uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, and the frequently asked question section is, uh, is a living document. They're adding to it as, uh, as questions or concerns come in from the field. The uh, program overview, the line guide and parent orientation videos out there. Um, again, the slide presentation, re recruiting materials. There will be actually uh, um, lion uh, flyers that, uh, that will be uh, made available for this fall. Um, so if we want lion-specific uh, recruiting materials, we'll, we'll, those will be available for August when we, uh, um, when we make uh, all of our, the rest of our Cub Scout back to school um, recruiting materials available. Uh, if you need help uh, you know, throughout the process, if you have questions, uh, you can certainly uh, feel free to contact the Center for Scouting at 920-734-5705. Um, again, you can ask uh, for your district executive, or again, I'm Brian Robb or Carl Bulbas uh, are here too to help uh, help support you. Uh, a lot of the information is also available on our website, BayLakesBSA.org.
dot org. Um, so, so as we uh, kind of go through this pilot program, uh, again, the, the pilot program will be assessed and evaluated throughout the year. Um, and we're going to be, uh, the national office is actually is going to be uh, um, spearheading the, uh, the evaluation process, but they'll be soliciting feedback uh, from uh, participating parents, from people that are registered as lion guides, um, from Cub Masters, from folks at the council level. Um, and, but it, I guess the, the thing that we want to reiterate is that for the pilot to, to be valid, it's important that we deliver the curriculum and program as written. So um, in this first year, um, yeah, please, it, it, it's critical that, that, that we follow the, uh, the program uh, as written, and then, then it will give the, the national office a great uh, baseline and feedback uh, for, for moving things forward. So some of the, the similarities in, in, in between lions and tigers, um, the, uh, both lion and tiger programs, adult partners are required. Um, we occurred to shared leadership in tigers, and we're, we're really uh, requiring shared leadership with, uh, with lions. Uh, the recognition program is uh, uh, the stickers and, and lion badge for lions, and with tigers, their adventure belt loops and the tiger badge. Uh, the uniform um, <clears throat> is a t-shirt and optional cap for lions, and again, it's uh, the official field uniform for tigers. Um, both of the uh, lions and tigers will learn the scout oath and scout law. Um, camping, um, <clears throat> family camping is fine with the, with the pack, but uh, uh, no den camping. So we don't want you to, uh, much like with, with tiger cubs, uh, we don't want uh, you to uh, have the lion dens uh, try to organize a, a den camp out uh, with the, the, the young boys. Um, and uh, also with camping, um, the boys will be eligible for Camp Rokalayo after they've completed the lion program. So keep in mind this program will start in the fall. These are five-year-old kindergartners will be able to uh, participate in, uh, in camp next summer. Um, and it's important as we, as we move forward, like currently we're recruiting, we could, we, we could be recruiting boys uh, that uh, are going into first grade as Tigers. They are eligible to go to camp right now to be a first experience. But with the Lion program, you need to again, understand that they're not eligible for um, camp until after they've completed the kindergarten year or the summer before they're going into first grade. Uh, again, both programs, it's about fun, active, hands-on activities. Um, some of the key differences, uh, obviously we know tigers that earn the bobcat as their first badge. The lions do not earn the bobcat. They're uh, earning, um, uh, they're learning a little bit about uh, some of the bobcat requirements, but they're not earning the bobcat. They're uh, doing their five uh, required uh, achievements and earning the lion badge. Uh, den meetings, uh, the tiger program does provide uh, option for three to four den meetings per month. The uh, lion program is really designed for only one to two uh, den meetings per month. And um, obviously with pack meetings, the tigers are fully integrated into the pack, um, attending all, all meetings where the lions, we're just asking you to find a couple, two to three um, opportunities for the lions to integrate into the as far as fundraising is concerned, um, please don't look at the Lions as an opportunity to, you know, to, to, to gain a sales force for your popcorn sale or your, or your, your fundraising. Um, we want them to, the pilot program was designed to, uh, I guess that wasn't tested in, in, in the pilot, so we're asking that the Lions are, are not um, out selling product door to door or uh, are not fundraising, whereas Tigers are full participants in fundraising. Um, <clears throat> And again, uh, again, camp, as we talked about earlier, uh, the camp would be uh, after they're done with the Lion program uh, next, um, next summer. So the activation timeline, we're really looking at we really now uh, throughout the summer to recruit and train Lion guides, uh, starting with uh, the back to school days at school in August, um, and then uh, through our our fall recruiting efforts were, in most cases around the council, we're targeting that uh, September 22nd, uh, Thursday as the day to join, or certainly around that time uh, would be the kind of the day we would organize and, and have our, uh, our um, first meetings. Uh, and then uh, we'd be off and running uh, throughout the school year, go through those five achievements, uh, 
integrate those boys into uh, two or three gen, uh, PAC meetings. And then uh, in May, um, there'll be uh, end of year surveys, evaluations, and uh, select focus groups uh, uh, conducted uh, throughout the country. Um, <clears throat> we need to let the, everybody know that's participating that uh, we may be uh, selected or may, may be asked to, uh, to join uh, some uh, focus groups. Um, the national office is going to be picking um, uh, several councils around the country to do focus groups with. Uh, uh, we may or may not be chosen for that, but we do need to disclose that we may uh, ask uh, those participating to, uh, to take part in the focus groups uh, at the end of the year. Um, that's all for the stat slide show. So. Yeah, so there's uh, some FAQs. There's probably 12, 15 pages of FAQs on the website. So they kind of addressed every random question that you might have and uh, a lot of the things we covered here today. Some of the things that I wanted to point out um, that weren't covered. First of all, uh, district activities. So kind of regional activities that are being done with multiple PACs. The Lion Cubs are eligible to attend those. Uh, a lot of districts have what they what a lot of them call Cub Scout Fun Days, and those are still considered district events. Those are not considered a camping event, so they are uh, able to go to those as well for those day programs. Uh, one of the questions was, what are some of the positive results you can share from uh, councils that already have piloted Lions? There was a, a few councils that piloted uh, the last couple of years. Um, in general, they had an extremely positive experience. Um, it was, you know, we uh, surveyed school principals, administration, families, and leaders, and they feel like the, it was a positive recruitment experience for everyone, and uh, felt like it was a good good program for, for that age of boy. Um, it, it did help families get engaged in scouting earlier before they got a full commitment uh, for other activities. A lot of times, I'm sure that you have seen that when uh, you go to recruit um, Tiger Cubs, that they're already doing activities they've already signed up a year before. So this will be a way that we can kind of uh, offer scouting at the same time as a lot of other activities that they're participating in. <clears throat> uh, you alluded to it earlier, but one of the great things is that with the shared leadership concept, I know a lot of you use this for um, kind of informally through your Tiger Cub program, but uh, it lightens the load, uh, gives the parents an opportunity to experience leadership without having to be the lead person. Something about being a leader is uh, scary for some folks, and it sort of takes the mystery away and disarms it a little bit, um, that it's, it's fairly easy to do. And we'll help you identify leaders who are uh, maybe able to help out with activities or other things on the committee, either this year or in future years. So uh, keep an eye on uh, those folks. They will be the, the future of your pack. And another concern was, you know, what was the retention like between the Lion Cub and the, and the Tiger Cub year? And the retention was actually very good, and the recruitment of new first graders into the Tiger program was greater as well. Um, the kindergartners had a good time, talked to their friends, and their, their families talked to each other, and if they weren't able to participate in kindergarten, they were ready to go in, uh, in first grade. So um, in general, they had a lot of fun, and uh, it was a good time for everyone. And so talking about jumping back to camping, the uh, families are able to go camping, and that, that includes um, some of our council activities uh, later in the Lion Cub year, the mom and sons and the dad and lad, they can start participating in that in the spring and next summer. And certainly PACs have one or two PAC campouts. They can go as an entire family as they would uh, any other uh, scout. So the next document that we wanted to show you on the website, it is um, handouts. And 
and get to here. Okay. Uh, so, yep. So go back. Okay, just a moment here. So it's down here at the uh, bottom of the web page are some of the resources, and one of them is a handout that we will provide to you guys uh, that are participating in the Lion Cup program. So there, none of our materials have you know, the parent orientation guide and other verbiage doesn't have Lion Cup in there, but for the 50 to 75 packs that are participating in there. Program overview. Yep. So if we go to program overview, um, we will, in your parent kits, we will provide you with uh, the first page of this. And, um, you know, so you can insert, you know, that in there. And we'll also provide you with the uh, table tent for um, if you do use those. Uh, Kindergarten, first grade, second grade, we'll, we will be getting you a, a Lion Cup blanket. So, so this um, gives a little bit more detail than you would normally see in like the parent guide for some of the other ranks. But as it is a, a brand new program, we want the parents to be fully uh, fully understand what uh, what it's about. And um, more information is is not necessarily a bad thing. So uh, this gives a, a nice little overview, and then you can use this uh, for talking points at your actual roundup. All right, so that, uh, that's a, a pretty much a tutorial on, on our system and, and what's out there. Again, remember those resources, uh, scoutdata.org slash lion or baylakesbsa.org. If you feel free to call 734-5705 uh, in the 920 area code. Uh, we're at about the 45 minute mark here. Uh, we do have time uh, to answer the, because the last the portion here is that we wanted to uh, answer some of your questions uh, uh, that you might have. And uh, we're going to go to the, um, um, the question pane here. We do have a question. Can we just uh, have the Lions uh, wear the standard Cub uniform? Um, the, this pilot program was designed to, to have the boys wear that t-shirt as we talked about, the 999 t-shirt rather than the uh, a higher cost uniform, um, so um, that uh, it was really kind of designed to to, to not be uh, as um, overwhelming, uh, being a smaller size. Then a year later, when the boys transitioned into tiger uh, into tigers, they would then uh, get the field uniform. And um, and really, with that, um, as boys grow, this will um, you could potentially have to buy two blue shirts and a, a tan shirt as you go through uh, the program. So uh, that, that's also something to consider. Uh, another question, uh, when you're registered the boys, are the uh, adult parents also registered as adult applicants? Uh, the, it, much like Tiger Cubs, every adult partner uh, listed on the bottom half of the uh, uh, lion application, or like, like it is in the tiger application, will be listed on the uh, pack charter as an adult partner. Those are non-paid uh, positions. They will show up on the charter, so more for your information, so you can track uh, contact information. Uh, the each pack that participates in the program is required to have one lion guide, much like a tiger den leader or wolf den leader. That person will be registered, dues paying. Can be multiple. If you've got somebody who's uh, already registered somewhere else and they're going to uh, participate in this program, they can multiple into the uh, uh, the, the tiger. Or, I'm sorry, the lion and guide role. Um, but the, the parent adult partners are not required to register dues pay. Um, certainly they're welcome to if the, they would like. Hopefully that answered uh, that question. Uh, entire family outings, does that mean the entire family now needs to fill out health forms uh, if they come to uh, um, family camps? Um, no. It, well, it, it would mean that the, the, the families uh, uh, would, uh, um, if you use the, the, um, the 
the, the basic uh, health information that, that would not be required to, to do physicals and things of that nature for just uh, or overnight camps. But uh, uh, good practice for uh, for all the uh, participants uh, for you to at least uh, understand uh, health information on the family. Uh, but no, they're not required to fill out uh, um, health forms. Um, all right. Now, uh, looks like uh, Angie was having some uh, speaker issues. Hopefully, you were able to, to hear this. Uh, if for those of you that we actually are recording this session, we'll uh, we'll put it up uh, online. Um, so if you wanted to sit through, uh, you know, 45 minutes uh, of uh, presentation, uh, we'll have it available. If you have folks in your unit that missed this presentation, again, we'll have uh, uh, the um, presentation up uh, on the website uh, for, uh, for folks, uh, BailixBSA.org website for people to view. Um, should adult partners be planning just dead meetings or should they also plan outings? Um, yeah, I think that it's, as we kind of share leadership, as we talk through the, the, the guide, whoever the, the lion guide is, I think the lion guide working in, in, in concert with those, uh, those parents uh, um, allow them to um, Plan the, uh, the the activity. So if you're going to do an, an uh, you know, a, a, if you if you decide, hey, at this uh, achievement, we're going to do a, a in-house activity and then also a, a a field trip or an outing. If you wanted to have the same person do that, it's fine. If you wanted to have uh, a second person do that, that's fine as well. Um, there's really not a, a requirement on that. Um, but um, the, really, the idea is we want to, to engage all the families and have them understand that we are sharing leadership and that they're you know, part of being uh, involved in scouting is that they're going to be asked to, to help with, uh, with tasks as we move forward. Uh, adult partners that need to fill out and pay application fees? No, they, uh, the partners do not pay the fee. They do pay the fee for the, through the youth, so it's the $24 annual fee for a tiger for a lion cub youth. But the adult partner is not dues paying. Just the lion guide, much like the den leader uh, for again for the for the, for the dens uh, in, in the past. Uh, what about participation in district events like uh, cub days or day camps or Rokalio experience? I think we touched on that that uh, that, that would be uh, okay as we you know at the latter half of of the year. Um, I guess so. I, I guess. Um, if it's going to be just like day experiences, like uh, come see camp. Um. Yeah, so the, um, you know, those single day activities would, would be okay to, to attend uh, even yet this fall, but the, the overnight uh, camping experiences, just again, because of their age and, and um, you know, kind of being out there and Outside is uh, really want them to focus on uh, the spring, uh, spring and next summer. Um, so, question on: uh, Can lion materials and uniforms be ordered online, or are they only available through the scout shop? Um, they're available through National Supply, so that they can be ordered online through Supply. And uh, also, uh, for those of you that may not know, if you if you uh, order. Through the scout shop, will uh, the scout shop here will will send direct shipped to, to you if you uh, don't have time or don't want to come into Appleton or Green Bay. Um, if you wanted to place a phone order, we can uh, get things shipped out to you. But yeah, it is also available um, through through uh, uh, National Supply uh, through online ordering. Good question, Brendan. Um, what about STEM? Uh, Shama, there's not a currently a STEM component to. to uh, um, to the uh, lion, uh, lion program, um, much like the tiger program, the, the those design STEM activities start at the, the wolf level. Um, so there um, may be some you know STEM type related uh, components to the activities, but uh, but there's not uh, the the formal BSA STEM curriculum is, is not to been designed for the, the lion pilot. Yeah, like the the um, adventure that we talked about, the gizmos and gadgets. I mean, that's you can gather that's along the lines of, of STEM. All right, here's a good question. Uh, if uh, Lions do not fundraise, how do they pay for the associated costs for the program? Um, you know, for, if in our community, uh, families uh, don't have sufficient funds to pay for the program. I guess what, I guess the answer to that is, and I don't know, there may be a, a point in the frequently asked questions on that, but I think what we're telling people is um, don't, don't view this as an opportunity to, um, you know, to, to have a bunch of five-year-olds uh, try to generate money. 
Um, the pilot program was designed to say, you know, let's keep fundraising, you know, let's, let's not make that a, 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 a large component. But I think as each pack uh, works through their their situation, um, you know, you know, there may be families, and you know, and I got, this was brought up before. Well, if a family, if a parent wanted to take a take to work tent to, to work uh, to sell popcorn, is it okay? Um, you know, I think that's the answer. To that was okay. Um, just the, the, you know, the uh, we don't want you know, like when we say like product sales and we you know we, we we're really putting campaigns together for tigers wolves bears and weeblows and boy scouts uh to to really be a, you know to learn how to sell things and to go out and that's it's a, it's a component of our program uh to get excited and go for prizes and things of that nature i'm just saying let's just not make that part of the the, the lion program so let's uh let's not uh um, um from from the national perspective let's not uh, take the, the five-year-old uh Kindergartner and, and um, you know treat them the same as a you know, second grader, third grader, fourth grader, where we're really teaching them to go out and sell. Um, and and really the feedback that we've gotten over the years from the Tiger Cubs is, uh, especially since like the our council's product sale popcorn sale starts pretty much right away at the first pack meeting in September, and that's um, some families see that as a turnoff as he just joined. Now you need to go hit the streets and, and sell some some popcorn. So uh, that was, uh, I'm sure, is one of the intentions. There is is taking the pressure off there, um, so their first activity isn't necessarily uh, selling popcorn right away. Um, uh, Cliff, I know you, you typed here. Uh, uh, what were some of the downsides? This may help us to avoid them. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking there, but we can maybe come back. Um, can we use den sheaves? Yeah, that's been that question's been asked. Yes, you you, you can use den sheaves if you have a, a good a Boy Scouts that uh, uh, would be good to work with. A, a, um, kindergartners, it's okay to use den sheaves. Uh, it's, it's not necessarily a, a design part of the program, but uh, if you can uh, show success with den sheaves again, this is a pilot. So I think in the pilot, uh, you know, we're looking for best practices. If you if you have a good a Boy Scout that can work with and help the the den. Uh, by all means, uh, um, then chiefs are fine. Um, we have older siblings who miss the lions and tigers, but uh, as a wolf next year, we'd like to get the bobcat activities completed. Can we as parents sign off on the activities? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, the, the, the program is, you know, really the, the, the whole Cub Scout program was designed to be a, a parent-child program. It's really just in the last several years that, that we've had den leaders sign off on, on activities. So by all means, and any of the Cub Scout activities can be signed off by parents. Uh, and again, that's uh, uh, Rachel. If, if there's you know questions uh, you know at a um, pack level or in your communities, um, um, you know, feel free to, to call us with specific questions. But by all means, um, you know the, the, the parents can can work with the, the boys on these activities. Bobcat, uh, and I know that question was specifically on. On older boys uh, that uh, need to earn their bobcat. So, um, all right. I think we've gotten through all of them. Let me go. Let me... All right. I think that was all the questions that uh, that we had typed in. Uh, if anybody else uh, does have any questions, uh, we'll. Uh, um, provide opportunities uh, for uh, for you to ask them. Uh, I know that uh, some of you are on your lunch hour, and it's uh, five to one right now. Uh, so we will uh, um, let you go. Um, appreciate your uh, your um, participation in the program, and uh, we look forward to uh, a great uh, great things uh, as we welcome uh, our. Uh, new kindergarten friends this fall into the uh, Lion program. So again, all that information will be uh, up online. We'll record the, the uh, uh, at least the uh, presentation up to the question and answers. Uh, again, those frequently asked questions uh, are out there. Uh, remember baylakesbsa.org or uh, scouting.org slash lion for all your, your lion information. So with that, uh, uh, again, thanks. Uh, have a great uh, day. And uh, we'll... Uh, Again, we'll, we'll hold on for five minutes here, but uh, um, that'll end our, our formal presentation. Thanks, everybody.
Okay, so we have, uh, looks like most people dropped off. We still have nine people on the line. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, um, I know Cliff is still there. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead, Cliff Polheber, I'm going to unmute you so maybe we can have a conversation here. There's like seven other people now. Somebody else just dropped off. Uh, Cliff, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I don't know if we addressed your question. On, I, uh, <clears throat> well, you actually, you addressed a lot of them, but one of the things I look at when I do surveys is I want to know what people did not like. What were their turnoffs so I can hopefully avoid or improve upon that? That's what I was wondering about your other pilot programs. Okay, so you're talking about from the the councils that the the early councils before the national rollout. What were there? Um, what didn't work for them? Is that what, is that what you're asking? Basically, yes. Okay, good question. Um, we can try to find that out. Actually, the the closest um, council that was part of this initial rollout was. Uh, Northern Star Council in St. Paul, Minneapolis, St. Paul. So they've been part of this for several years now. Um, they've actually, it, this has been piloting in a small, small section for, I mean, the, the boys that started in the initial year are now in Boy Scouts, so it, they, they kind of track retention and things like that all the way through. So they have a pretty good wow. base of, of what works and what didn't work, and they've been doing the program uh, for like five years now. Ah, okay. So now, is Six this years. the first year that this is put out nationally? So it yeah. was just being tested in one or two locations, and now the whole everybody is getting an opportunity. Correct. Yeah, it's rolled out. It, it's really been, this. This program was designed uh, for those of you that are also listening. This was designed as uh, when National last year redid all the curriculum. Uh, it's really been designed to, to, to fully be integrated but it's still in pilot stage. So this is the first year we're rolling out to the whole country. It was really a very controlled uh, segment. The BSA has is, is really been kind of targeting, you know, how can we serve kindergartners? The Girl Scouts do it with the DAISY program. Uh, and they've done some really controlled groups. And they found it to be very highly successful in helping to retain and, and transition youth throughout the program. Um, however, with the national rollout, um, you know, they want to make sure that you know we're following the the program as as it's been as it's worked in, in Minneapolis and other areas. Um, so yeah, this is the first time that we're rolling it out to the whole country. Oh, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll, I'll um, we we got some pretty good uh, contact. Actually, this is um, one of the uh, um, the projects that Mark Logeman is working on at the national office. So um, we've got some pretty good. Uh, Good resources uh, to, uh, to to get, get information on. So I'll, I'll we'll try to get the um, you know get some feedback or you know what what maybe didn't work and we can share that. Yeah, because I'm a roundtable commissioner for the Cub Scout breakouts, and I know I'm going to be getting some questions and concerns, and I want to make sure that I have everybody going in the direction they're supposed to. And I noticed sure. you emphasized that several times in the PowerPoint about follow the program as written. Well, the big, I guess the critical thing, Cliff, is the reason we, they're saying that and we're saying that on uh, behalf of the national office is that what we, what happens a lot of times when these things roll out from national is, hey, they work well in one area and we're big on sharing best practices in this organization. And if, you know, if it works one way and then you say, okay, well, this, this is great, let's go serve kindergartners, and, you know, people start changing it and doing it differently and then it doesn't work, uh, then, you know, Pretty quickly, it can, the momentum can get shut down, and we say, "Well, this doesn't work." But we, you know, we're not going to serve kindergartners. We're, you know, we're all about tigers. I mean, it, when we, you know, we we introduced tigers, it was kind of like that. You know, first graders or right. back in the '30s when they, you know, introduced the Cub Scout program. I mean, it was just there, there's a lot of opportunities to, you know, to mess things up, I guess, and we want to make sure we do a role. So, uh, to get back to my um, health form question. I guess yeah. what I was referring to is you're doing one den meeting a month plus a field trip, of which the whole family is invited for the field trip. Now, that is considered a scout outing, and therefore everybody should have at least Part A and B health form filled out. 
Are we going to want to enforce that for the entire families on these dead no. activities? Um, I would say no. Okay. I haven't heard. I haven't heard that we ought to be doing that. Okay. And, and may, that's as a training that guy, you may have up. a different interpretation of that, Cliff, and we can talk about that. But I, I, I don't believe that we are going to be. We need to require that. Okay, I know that these are questions that will come up, and that's why I wanted to sure. get that clarified. I mean, I understand going to the day events like Rokalio Experience or a day camp or actually you know, club days and stuff. Yes, I can understand those. Okay. Great. Anything well, else? Uh, no, actually, it's going to be excited because I know a couple of units that are looking to try and do this, so this might be kind of an exciting thing. Great. All right, so I've got, uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead, I've got, um, I, hopefully this doesn't get too wacky, there's only four people on the line. Uh, i got Angie, Jason, and Paul, I, I opened the phone lines to everybody, so if anybody else has any questions, um, feel free to ask them. And then you have Paulina. All right. Anything else, Cliff, that you asked? No, I don't have anything else. No. Okay, great. Uh, Jason, Paul, Angie, if nothing else, we'll uh, we'll sign off here and uh, call it a, a day. Thanks, everybody.